Well, good day to you all, dear friends, and welcome to this 18th day of November. It is day 322 in our journey through the Bible. Hello to everyone out there. This is Hunter, your brother, your Bible reading coach, someone who shows up with you every day to spend some time together in the pages of the Bible. We're going to let the Bible do what it does and go ahead and direct our hearts to the one who is the living word of God, the one alone who has those words of life. And so you've come here today because God has drawn you to this time that he might speak something to you. Maybe it's not going to be one of those earth shattering days. Who knows? It might be. You might find yourself jumping out of your seat and saying yes to something that God has spoken to your heart about. It might be something completely different. It might just be another layer, another daily reminder of something that is bedrock, something foundational, something that just needs to be said over your soul again and again. Whatever the case is, my friend, you are here and I am here. We're all here that we might receive from him the words of life. And so today we're going to look into the Gospel of Matthew, chapters 1 through 4. Can't wait. Father, thank you. Help us now to see. Matthew chapter 1. This is a record of the ancestors of Jesus, the Messiah, a descendant of David and of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac was the father of Jacob. Jacob was the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah was the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez was the father of Hezron. Hezron was the father of Ram. Ram was the father of Aminadab. Aminadab was the father of Nahashon. Nahashon was the father of Salmon. Salmon was the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz was the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed was the father of Jesse. Jesse was the father of King David. David was the father of Solomon, whose mother was Bathsheba, the widow of Uriah. Solomon was the father of Rehoboam. Rehoboam was the father of Abijah. Abijah was the father of Asa. Asa was the father of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was the father of Jehoram. Jehoram was the father of Uzziah. Uzziah was the father of Jotham. Jotham was the father of Ahaz. Ahaz was the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah was the father of Manasseh. Manasseh was the father of Ammon. Ammon was the father of Josiah, Josiah was the father of Jehoiachin and his brothers, born at the time of the exile to Babylon. After the Babylonian exile, Jehoiachin was the father of Shiltil, Shiltil was the father of Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel was the father of Abiud, Abiud was the father of Eliakim, Eliakim was the father of Azor, Azor was the father of Zedak, Zedak was the father of Akim, Akim was the father of Eliud, Eliud was the father of Eleazar, Eleazar was the father of Matan, Matan was the father of Jacob. Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Mary gave birth to Jesus, who is called the Messiah. All those listed above included 14 generations from Abraham to David, 14 from David to the Babylonian exile, and 14 from the Babylonian exile to the Messiah. This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph, but before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. 
All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child, she will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife. And he did not have sexual relations with her until her son was born, and Joseph named him Jesus. Matthew 2 Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem, asking, Where is this newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, Where is this Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said. For this is what the prophet wrote, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah, for a ruler will come from you, who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way. And the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary. And they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, for God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. After the wise men were gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, flee to Egypt with the child and his mother, the angel said. Stay there until I tell you to return, because Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. That night, Joseph left for Egypt with the child and Mary, his mother, and they stayed there until Herod's death. This fulfilled what the Lord had spoken through the prophets, I called my son out of Egypt. Herod was furious when he realized that the wise men had outwitted him. He sent soldiers to kill all the boys in and around Bethlehem who were two years old and older, based on the wise men's report of the star's first appearance. Herod's brutal action fulfilled what God had spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A cry was heard in Ramah, weeping in great mourning. Rachel weeps for her children, refusing to be comforted, for they are dead. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. Get up, the angel said. Take the child and his mother back to the land of Israel, because those who were trying to kill the child are dead. So Joseph got up and returned to the land of Israel with Jesus and his mother. But when they learned that the new ruler of Judea was Herod's son, Archelaus, he was afraid to go there. Then after being warned in a dream, he left for the region of Galilee. So the family went and lived in a town called Nazareth. This fulfilled what the prophet had said. He will be called a Nazarene. Matthew 3 In those days John the Baptist came to the Judean wilderness and began preaching. His message was, Repent of your sins and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. The prophet Isaiah was speaking about John when he said, He is a voice shouting in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord's coming, clear the road for him. John's clothes were woven from coarse camel hair, and he wore a leather belt around his waist. For food he ate locusts and wild honey. People from Jerusalem and from all of Judea and all over the Jordan Valley went out to see and hear John. And when they confessed their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming to watch him baptize, he denounced them. You brood of snakes, he exclaimed. Who warned you to flee the coming wrath? Prove by the way that you live that you have repented of your sins and turned to God. Don't just say to each other, we're safe, for we are descendants of Abraham. That means nothing. For I tell you, 
God can create children of Abraham from these very stones. Even now, the axe of God's judgment is poised, ready to sever the roots of the trees. Yes, every tree that does not produce good fruit will be chopped down and thrown into the fire. I baptize with water those who repent of their sins and turn to God, but someone's coming soon who is greater than I am, so much greater that I'm not even worthy to be his slave and carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. He is ready to separate the chaff from the wheat with his winnowing fork. Then he will clean up the threshing area, gathering the wheat into the barn, but burning the chaff with never-ending fire. Then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. But John tried to talk him out of it. I am the one who needs to be baptized by you, he said. So why are you coming to me? But Jesus said, It should be done, for we must carry out all that God requires. So John agreed to baptize him. After his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my dearly loved Son, who brings me great joy. Matthew 4 Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. For forty days and forty nights he fasted and became very hungry. During that time the devil came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus said to him, No, the scriptures say, People do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple and said, If you are the Son of God, jump off. For the scripture says, He will order his angels to protect you, and they will hold you up with their hands, so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Jesus responded, The scriptures also say, You must not test the Lord your God. Next the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. I will give it all to you, he said, if you will kneel down and worship me. Get out of here, Satan, Jesus told him. For the scriptures say you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil went away, and the angels came and took care of Jesus. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he left Judea and returned to Galilee. He went first to Nazareth then left there and moved to Capernaum, beside the Sea of Galilee, in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali. This fulfilled what God said through the prophet Isaiah, In the land of Zebulun and of Naphtali, beside the sea, beyond the Jordan River, in Galilee, where so many Gentiles live, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who lived in the land where death cast its shadow, a light has shined. From then on, Jesus began to preach, Repent of your sins and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. One day as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, also called Peter, and Andrew, throwing a net into the water, for they fished for a living. Jesus called out to them, Come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once and followed him. A little farther up the shore, he saw two other brothers, James and John, sitting in a boat with their father Zebedee, repairing their nets, and he called them to come too. They immediately followed him, leaving the boat and their father behind. Jesus traveled throughout the region of Galilee, preaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom. And he healed every kind of disease and illness. News about him spread as far as Syria, and people soon began bringing to him all who were sick. And whatever their sickness or disease, or if they were demon-possessed or epileptic or paralyzed, he healed them all. Large crowds followed him wherever he went, people from Galilee, the ten towns, Jerusalem, from all over Judea, and from east of the Jordan River.
And now may our Lord give his blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Why are you coming to me? I am the one who needs to be baptized by you, he said. The message of the law and the prophets teach us that we need to come to God. And that's a good message because we do. John the Baptist is shouting as best as he can, come to God, come to God. John says that the way you come to him is through confession and baptism. But now, God comes to us and he wants to be baptized by human hands. And John says, wait a minute, why are you coming to me? That's not the message. We need to come to you. Jesus came to us because we are incapable of coming to him. The gospel is that God has come to us. God is doing for us what we could not do for ourselves. Try as we might, we falter, we fail, we sin. We know God is worthy and deserving of all of our our allegiance, our life, our obedience, but yet we fail. We try to come to him, but we can't seem to make up that vast distance. And the law is a great reminder of that. So John asks, why are you coming to me? And Jesus, he says, in effect, I had to come because you are incapable of coming to me. The law has shown us this distance, but Jesus has made it up. That's the good news. The gospel is that God loves us so much that he has come to us. That was God's plan all along. So let's hear Jesus' answer to John's question today. He came to you because you couldn't come to him. He did it out of love for you. He did it out of love for the whole world. He made up the distance for you, and he has not delayed showing his love for you until you show your love for him. No, the news is much better than that. God is so much better than that. So let him transform our thinking, your thinking, my thinking today, and give you joy. That's the prayer that I have for my own soul. That's a prayer that I have for my family. And that's the prayer that I have for you. May it be so. Well, hey, hey, DRB Nation. I've got some news for you. Some of you have been sending me messages and emails and smoke signals telling me, hey, where is that Journey podcast? Where did it go? It disappeared from my feed. And it's nothing that you've done wrong. (laughs) You are not to blame It is something that we have changed. Now we have the Journey Podcast as a stand-alone podcast. It's no longer folded into the DRB. It's out there standing on its own two feet. And in fact, we've given it a new name. It's called Daily Lectionary with Hunter Barnes. And you can get it anywhere that you get your podcast. Again, the name is Daily Lectionary. Lectionary. And we changed the name because, well, that is what it is. We are reading through the Daily Lectionary, the Revised Common Lectionary, to be more specific. But the name is Daily Lectionary. Let me not confuse you any more than I already have. And for those who don't know what a lectionary is, it is a reading plan. To put it simply, it is a very well-known reading plan, mind you. Churches all around the world are reading through this specific set of readings. And this particular plan takes three years to go through the Bible. And it also follows the church calendar very closely. And so, for instance, we're about to head into the season of Advent, which is on the church calendar. And so the readings will be very tailored to that season of the year. And you'll see the same thing during Lent. The readings leading up to Easter will again be very specific in relationship to that season of the year. So that's what we've been doing with this podcast for a couple of years now, and I am finally making it its own 
podcast. So check it out. Daily Lectionary with Hunter Barnes, and you can get it wherever you get your podcasts. Well, hey, I'm going to go ahead and let you all go. But what do you say we all show up again here tomorrow and we will do this again. Lord willing, in the creek don't rise, your brother Hunter plans on being here. Until that time, let's go forward. Let's go forward in God's joy. Let's let his joy be our strength. And let us always remember this. Are you ready for this? I hope you are. That you are loved. No doubt about it. Alrighty, I'll talk to you again tomorrow. You guys take care.